How are you all? And welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Good to be here. Yes. Very welcome. Thank you all for taking the time out of your very busy schedules, shooting photos with your iPhones, making <laughs> movies with your mobile devices. So uh, what I'd love to do is uh, I'd love for you all to introduce yourselves. So if I start with um, uh, Christian on my far left. Christian, do you oh. want to uh, introduce yourself? Howdy, everybody. My name's uh, Christian J. Sweet. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I guess we'll kind of go into depth as we go on, but um, anybody wants to keep tabs on anything that's going on uh, afterwards, uh, you find me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, um, Facebook, stuff like that. Just Christian J. Sweet, all one word, and uh, yeah, glad to be here. Thanks a million. Doc? Yeah, howdy. Uh, my name's uh, Dr. Popular. Uh, I'm Doc Pop on Twitter and Instagram uh, and a uh, mobile photography, uh, black and white and glitch photography artist. Dutch? <clears throat> um, my name okay. is Dutch Dutcher. I'm a filmmaker by trade. Um, I got into mobile um, photography in 2008, I think, 2009, with the, and... Um, you know, I'm very happy to be here. Nice to meet all of you and see some old friends. Thanks. Hi, Kochi. How you doing? I'm uh, Richard Kochi Hernandez. Uh, everyone calls me Kochi. <laughs> uh, you can find me Twitter, Instagram, all at Kochi. Uh, spent most of my time as a professional photojournalist. Now I teach new media at Berkeley, and I exclusively use my iPhone to do everything. <laughs> Ali, how are you? Welcome to the show. I'm good. Hey Mel, how are you? Hello everyone. I'm Oli. I, um, I live in Sydney in Australia and I, I've, um, I started shooting around the same time as the others, around, uh, some of the others in 2008 and I've been teaching mobile photography in a few places in Sydney, uh, the uh, Australian Centre for Photography, uh, Museum for Contemporary Art, and also Art Gallery of New South Wales. And um, I am Ogsie, O G G S I E, on pretty much everything. So that's Twitter, Flickr, and etc. Um, and of course, Instagram. So thank you. Great, thanks a million. And uh, uh, I really appreciate again you all, uh, you know, taking time out of your day. Um, so there are three parts to the show, and the, the first part that I'd love to uh, spend some time talking about is um, iPhone photography. And, um, you know, the format is, it's, it's, it's very open. So um, if anybody wants to jump in and take the lead on iPhoneography, iPhone photography, mobile photography, and uh, start the conversation, please do. Oh, well, well. Open door. Uh, <laughs> I'll jump, I'll Open jump door. right in. I'm only jumping in first because I believe, I hope that one day we can stop distinguishing what we're doing <laughs> as a subset of, um, of of something because all it is is a it's a it's a it's a, it's a device <laughs> and it's a it's a device for photography and what most people do with it, and I said most people, not all people, um, is a form of photography. It doesn't, you know, I, quite frankly, I'm, you know, I do photography on this thing, and other people use it as Kristen's stuff is absolutely stunning photography on there and some, you know, art, um, but it's, it's, it's photography. When you practice the art of capturing light, composition, um, in a still image, you're practicing photography, whether you're using a 5D or a Nikon or a Leica or whatever. Um, so I hope that one day, and I think we will look back and go, oh, we were calling it mobile photography, but really it was just okay. photography. <laughs> I don't know. That's my opening two cents. Well, I'm, I'm certainly not a fan of the iPhoneography term oh. because I think it's kind of weird to, to go with a brand or to kind of cross out like Android or other folks which are, their cameras are probably going to be just as good or whatever but um, it's you certainly, it, it is nice to have like a term if you're coming to a workshop on photography and you bring your DSLR and I'm talking about how do you snap seed uh, there's going to be some awkwardness there so it is a handy term but uh, I, I just kind of 
hope that I'm not using it as a crutch, like this is good because it's mobile photography. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that, that all of us are kind of thinking that we like what we're doing mm -hmm. as photography. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a, not a fan of overusing the term, but it is handy sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'd have to uh, say that that, that term was um, uh, more important to think of it as a, uh, I guess, a reference point for a community. and. Um, it's really one of the original mobile photography uses of hashtags in sharing, which really was a, a, a great centralized uh, central point for people to come to and to find each other around. A lot of us uh, first became aware of each other through a term, through Twitter, and then of course Instagram comes along and everyone's in the same playing ground after all. Um, uh, but I think as a, as a point of reference for a technical, I think it's, uh, it's very limiting. Uh, but as a point of reference for a community, I think it's very empowering, and um, I, I think that there's going to be more, uh, the, but in future more terms that come out. But the more inclusive they are, the better. Um, the more specific they are, the easier for conversations. But um, yeah, I think maybe it'll be interesting to see what other terms start coming up you know, through the system. I, I mean, so, just yesterday they had a whole. There is a. Um, a blogger who just wrote glowing reviews about Apple left and right and switched over to an Android um, finally. Who is it? Who is that, Kochi? Guy? I don't know his name. I just read it, though, this morning. <laughs> I think it was Guy um, Kawa. No, it wasn't him. It was, um, I will look that up. Hold on. Because I, anyway, um, but he also wasn't using it for photography, but you know, at some point, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between what is a p picture taken on a phone and what's a picture taken on. Yeah, a phone. I agree. And even as a judge for the Mobile Photo Awards, I did it the last two years. This year was a whole lot harder than last year to be able to tell the difference between what was a DSLR and what was a mobile uh, device. And next year, I'm assuming. If I'm asked to be a judge again, the same thing will happen. You know, it'll be even harder next year. Um, it's going to be impossible, and anyone who hangs on to um, that term, especially iPhoneography, um, it's only you know that it's not a term that can be held on to, and then it becomes mm -hmm. a fad. And once you're a fad, you're a joke eventually, and mm -hmm. that's where the and that's where and you know and some people are hanging on to that word for dear life. Mm -hmm. no, I yeah. agree. It's time to let it go, and uh, it's actually one of the re reasons I got started in this whole uh, um, mobile photography. Is just someone told me that it wasn't possible to to ever be able to um, th that basically a mobile phone would never compare to something like a DSLR. That you'd never get that same quality. And being uh, as stubborn as I am, I kind of. Uh, Kind of moved out in that direction. Actually, my 5D ended up breaking, which kind of ended up like kind of catapulting me into having to use it for the last year. So, still, uh, still going with it. But you also can't do your kind of work on a DSLR. You can maybe take some of those pictures that and you use for your be, for your projects. But yeah, the middleman would be Photoshop and all that stuff. But now that I can do it all in one device, it's yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. And you've been known to sit and app a picture for 15 hours straight. Mm, yeah, I'll get uh, arthritis probably real quick. So, <laughs> put it that way. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun though, but uh, definitely requires a lot of patience and uh, a lot of headache. So, so one of the things that uh, just myself and Kochi were just talking about, where we were looking at some of your your images just before you came on the call. And we were just wondering about the um, uh, the process that you had. And like, I suppose the question um, well, Kochi had was, why would you spend your time with a tiny little screen when you can shoot on your Mark D or your your 5D Mark II mm -hmm. and um, sit in front of a screen and produce a higher resolution image? So, what are your what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I mean, I get that question all the time. They're like, well, why don't you just get an iPad at least, like upgrade just a little bit? And I'm just like, oh, well, I just, I like, I don't know, the uh, the challenge, I guess, uh, of just being able to, to do it on the iPhone. And then there's always the, uh, so what did you do this on, uh, Photoshop? Like, what camera do you have? I'm like, no, actually, I did it on my phone. <laughs> They're like, what, you didn't even do it on an iPad? I'm like, no, just my dinky little 4S which I still love, 
I love it. I still use my 3GS or, um, at times just because I they shoot um, very differently. But um, yeah, I think it's just most of the uh, I don't know the stubborn, just kind of challenge taking uh, part of me. So I don't know. It just I've considered it. I've played around with the iPad a little bit, but I haven't like sat down for very long to go like a full in depth project with it. But uh, I might consider it. <laughs> So just one, just one last question on that. Where are you actually um, uh, doing the work? Like, are you using? Um, it, it, do you have a preference for just being anywhere with the phone, or is it? You know, I'm all phones? about atmosphere, definitely for uh, everything that I do. Whether it's writing, which is my my favorite thing to do, writing, reading, just any sort of like artistic medium that requires, especially um, just a lot of concentration. Um, if I can get closer to uh, pine trees in the woods, or just somewhere completely solitary, I mean, get closer to the, the, the closer I can get to that, the better. So um, usually it's a couch or the floor. Or I kind of like move. I just kind of like I start on the couch, I roll off the couch. Maybe I'll start rolling around the furniture and eventually end up just somewhere completely across the room. So I don't know. It kind of varies depending on the mood. Doc, I've loved a lot of your work that you've produced and delivered on um, uh, Instagram over the years. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the importance of um, experimenting? Sure. You know? Yeah. So, so when I when I um, when I got my first iPhone, it was the only computer I even had at the time because my computer had crashed, and I got the first generation iPhone. But I'm not a very techie person. It was just kind of a, it. It was a computer, and it had all this other stuff on it, and um, became obsessed with apps of all sort pretty quickly, especially because we, we were seeing the first generation of apps, like all the all the the weird stuff getting worked out, like how much did an app cost, and what should apps do, and what can they access, and all that stuff. And uh, uh, along that lines, I, I um, also got into photography, so it was kind of fun seeing when there was just five photo apps at the time, and going into where there was maybe uh, 10 a day uh, to, to now there's probably maybe 20 or 30 new photo apps every single day and I, I still have this RSS feed to iTunes and I see every single app that comes through in terms of photography um, but I just don't buy them anymore I guess I guess, uh, I, I, guess I, I figured out um, a couple weeks ago that I actually bought about 3,000 apps or you know downloaded 3,000 apps uh, most of those were free Wow. and uh, for the course of one year, I decided to kind of dedicate um, a little bit of time every single day to playing with a new combination of apps. Uh, and some of them weren't even meant to be photo apps. Like some of them, I actually had to take screenshots in order to kind of get the image that was in. Like they were like puzzle apps that you know use photos in your book or whatever. And uh, just during that time is uh, also when I discovered Instagram and. Um, a lot of people were curious about what apps were worth downloading, so I guess I kind of served a dual purpose of, um, uh, you know, being an experimenter but also an app reviewer. Uh, if people liked what they saw, then they would get the app, and if they didn't, they would ignore it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that was that was a really fun time. I mean, you know, I had like a hour ride to work just about every day, uh, so just sitting on the train, I had very very few things more fun to do than, you know, edit shots and play around with new apps. Uh, and the, yeah, the I know. I am. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say I um, uh, I learned a lot a lot in the first like five six months just from watching your stream and, and and downloading a number of these apps and sort of going like, you know, I'm shocked at what you were able to produce. You know, just really truly amazing. You know, um, but I suppose what I'd love to do is just to like um, uh, round up this segment by um, um, by just talking about you know the latest apps this week. You know, so. Um, the latest apps that I've seen were um, Pro Camera, Fast Camera, Pano Picture, Kick Cam, and IM. And basically, um, you know, the updates that I've seen that were that were interesting is Pro Camera finally fixing their light box for um, iOS five, um, and and that was a good update for me um, because I, I have iOS five and uh, I still have iPhone four, so um, I always had a problem with that. Um, and then the only other thing was uh, I did. Ha I, I, does anybody use Kick Cam at all? I am a big I'm a, a big fan of it um, now. One of the reasons I I particularly like it is, you know, I always wish that Hipstamatic would allow you to bring in pictures maybe you shot in other apps, but KitCam allows you to like 
pick the film, pick the lens, and shoot, but it, uh, and put the border and see it all on live preview, and it's really fast. But you can now pull in from your camera roll and put borders, effects, different films and lenses on things, which I, I particularly um, like. And not to mention the other thing that I think it gives. I absolutely love Hipstamatic, but it gives its it its run for its money because it. It also has now the exposure and focus control, the dual where you can separate them. Yep. So for it's me, it's the camera, yep. a, real, a lot more of a, of a go-to app because it allows me to kind of get a particular look and feel I want, you know, along with um, the control I want. And so uh, I, I love, love, love that new update. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I love Hipstamatic, um, but... What I'm starting to see is that the developers are moving very quickly to add the features and functionality that, you know, I think the um, early um, uh, camera apps had, you know. I mean, like Kick Camera, I think they've really, they've really come along and they've produced, um, you know, a set of updates in a, in a very short period of time that I think, to your point, Kochi, it does rival um, what's happening with, um, you know, Hipster. Um, Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Anybody has anybody downloaded any other apps this week that um, that were interesting? And not new apps, but apps that they've um, that they've seen sort of um, uh, updates that were relevant to the uh, photography process and made it easier or better or faster. Well, <clears throat> I, I've I've been really impressed by the IM updates. Each time they get just a little yeah. bit better, and yeah. um, you know the. The inability to multiple tag is still a problem, and 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 people finding you on there can be a, a little a little dicey. But that one, I'm uh, I'm I'm always happy when they have a new update, and their new um, filter is actually really nice. I I when, actually when I saw the filter, I thought of Kochi. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? I, I thought maybe they, they meant to dedicate it to me because it is K-C-E or something. I'm like, maybe they meant to spell Kochi, but they got it wrong. <laughs> uh, I think I think there is a, there's actually another user who um, I think they dedicated it to. I think it's a KCE7. Um, oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. 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 So um, one example of a, an app that I've used this week, which I would never have thought of using before, is a, is a new app for photo sharing. Um, and it's... It replaces, you know when you go to weddings and you find a bunch of people um, sitting around a table and there'd be one of the d disposable cameras there for you to just take some photos and you collect them at the end. Yeah. But this is an app called Wed WedPix, WedPix, and it's um, iOS, Android. And so basically everyone downslo downloads this WebPix app, logs into the wedding, and puts all their photos to the wedding. And they, this gives the bride and groom all that photo content that they can share it on all their social media. Um, they can download it. They can basically put together albums. And I think it's a, it's a interesting to seeing just how niche mobile photography is becoming now that you're actually offering wedding photography, mobile photography kind of services like that. You know, not like a hashtag on Instagram or, you know, emailed me the photos. It's real time, so you could see the photos. I was on the bridal table, and I could see photos from all the different tables, and you know who was there. And it was it was a really interesting experience. Um, and could be quite a, a, a good app to use in future. Well, I definitely love to. So go ahead. I was going to say it's kind of funny they they called it uh, was it WebPic or something. It just seems very limiting because that seems like that could. I, I hear people asking for that sort of functionality quite often. Uh, yeah, so. you, you've never met a bright cozy. Um, <laughs> trust me, they want this. Okay, this is this is a beautiful app for a bride. Um, although it's really the, uh, the it was the husband who's the uh, the IT guy. Um, but yeah, they loved it. They, they're sold on it, and you know, it's this sort of stuff that allows people to then share the their weddings on things like Pinterest, etc., which is a huge service for planning your weddings. You know, you see people planning their Pinterest wedding before their actual wedding. You know, so there's there's a lot of that there. There's there's one new um, new app that I've been playing with, Glitch Lab. Uh, G L I T C H L A B. It's kind of a competitor to Decimate, which uh, yeah. has been one of my favorites. And I, I still love Movax, but I'm really happy to see like every app that comes out that we all seem to like. There always seems to be a clone, and somehow Decimate has kind of avoided that. And this isn't a clone; it's actually a totally different take on it. And one of one of the nice features it has. It's pretty limited, but one of the nice features is when you're when you're adding a glitch to it, like you're kind of adding a little data point that breaks everything beyond a certain point. 
you can then rotate the image and then you can do the same thing. So if you're doing decimate over and over again, you'll start to notice the effects tend to be always near the bottom or always tend to go to the right. Um, so this is kind of cool to be able to have that rotate button because uh, you're doing the same kind of data glitching, but it's nice to just not always have it at the bottom. Oh, this is, I, I actually, I'm so excited by this because you never, you hardly ever get a group of people together like, what new apps do you have? <laughs> there, there's, two, there's two to geek out. One I love is such a throwback. Um, I'm so sorry to see the idea of um, um, proof sheets gone. Proof sheets were such a beautiful idea and, and a way to get into photographers' heads and how they were shooting and it was like, you actually got to see they went from here to here to here to here to here. Um, and there's a new app. It, it's got very limited functionality, and it, it's a bit of a novelty, but I like I like it. It's called uh, 36. Mm -hmm. And it's basically mm -hmm. you get one roll of 36 film, you have to shoot it all, and then at the end you can process it early if you want. But it spits out um, a proof sheet, but here's what's cool. It allows you to, in kind of old school, um, like with a red line, outline oh, the ones you like oh. in red, and then circle the ones you kind of like in yellow, and then, you know, I've been sending them back and forth with friends, like, here's my proof sheet, which ones do you like? And um, so I, I kind of, I, I thought that one was had been pretty cool. And then to bite a little bit off of um, Doc's idea of the Glitch Lab, there's this new one called Deco Sketch, which for those people that do... Um, I call them, they're almost like graphics, you know, it's kind of like, I call it like a photographic. It's like a photo with the base, but it has lots of, um, you know, design elements in it and lines and numbers and stuff. Deco Sketch is a pretty, is a pretty cool one that I've just been playing around with. But those are the ones I've been excited about. And, and there's is, one, one other one that I actually liked a lot this week. It's called InstaShare. <laughs> and they have one for both um, desktop and mobile. We can drag your pictures in and, and sort of like um, Dropbox, but it doesn't compress your image like Dropbox does. So um, I was immediately happy about that. OK, we've definitely gone over our time for this segment. But um, uh, just a quick question for everybody out there. Um, you think it's worthwhile continuing um, producing a, uh, a show with that segment in mind? I mean, I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> you guys were fabulous. But, uh, <laughs> any thoughts there? There's no shortage of apps, so yeah. you, you'll always have material that kind of... There itself. will always be. Yeah. There will always be. All right, so let's, let's move into like the it, next section. Let's keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like it. Um, so the next area that I'd love to just um, uh, touch upon is uh, iPhone videography. And um, I don't know um, how many of us here are iPhone videographers or who shoot um, a lot of video, but me personally... Um, Probably over the last six months, I've spent a lot more time actually shooting video than I have taking photographs, and and really just sort of like diving into all the various apps that are out there. Um, so I'd love to pick somebody Dutch. I'm going to jump on you, sir. <laughs> and um, before we get into apps, um, I'd love to just talk about the um, uh, the differences between photography and videography because it is a very different medium. Thoughts on that, Dutch? Well, I mean, it's an entirely different medium. And, you know, we, we were talking briefly about it before. And, and um, I love shooting with my iPhone. And I even love shooting video with my iPhone. The problem is, is the, the thing I, about shooting video with a mobile device is it really has to be about the art or the moment. It can't be about t telling a big story because the lens is so limiting in story for storytelling. And if you're going to go that route, um, if you're going to go and use your phone for storytelling, and I've seen some good videos made by people um, with telling uh, telling stories with their iPhone, is you have to spend as much time lighting, paying attention to the acting, the same stuff that you would have to do with a big camera, with a DSLR, with a good lens, any of those things you have to do uh, the same thing for it to for it to stand out. Otherwise, it looks like a home movie. You know, you've got to spend the time to color correct and, and um, cut it together and make it have a mood. You know, like those train videos I did. I did these train videos um, in the subways of New York City, and I got a ridiculous amount of hits. But, you know, I spent 
time doing them. You know, I, I sped them up. I did a whole color correct. Um, and they were made just for art, just for me, you know. And they actually, that's how, I think that's even how you, you and Mal, you and I found each other. Yeah. You know, through those train videos. Yeah. I don't know if how many of you have seen them, but, you know, they're not complicated, but they're fun and they're about the moment and they're about capturing um, movement in a way that you just quite haven't seen before. So look, the iPhone has, you know, it has the functionality. We can take photos. We can take panoramas. We can take video. Um, Dutch, I hear what you're saying, um, but does anybody else want to jump in and say, look, it's not going to happen. It is going to work. You know, we've seen Vidi tout Cinemagram. We've seen the first wave. We're now, you know, we're now looking at the, uh, the vines, the, the lights of the world coming out with a with a second attempt to try and solve the video problem. Like, what is the problem? Like, what are we trying to solve? I mean, I love shooting video. I just wish there was a way in which I could share it. And I don't know, um, I don't know whether or not I've, I've, I've yet found the app or whether or not I've found the, um, the correct mechanism to be able to do that. But um, I just find the video um, storytelling process so much more compelling than uh, a single photo. Anybody uh, want to jump in? It's hard. I mean, you, um, Mal and I were on the street one night, and Mal was walking up to anyone who would talk to him and 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 asked if he could <laughs> shoot them for um for the light app. And he was he was doing really interesting things about taking little pieces of their moment in the streets of New York that um, I really loved. And if you want to see some someone using video, um, sort of to create a moment, much like photography, but in a moving way, and Mal is doing that. Um, you know. He's very good with, with that stuff. But it's hard. I just think storytelling requires that, that level of storytelling. It's not, a, it's not a personal event like photography. It's in a, you know, like you can go out and take a picture, or you can go out in the morning. Like I get up on Saturday and Sunday mornings before the sun rises, and I go out by myself and I take pictures, and it's very cathartic and it clears my head for you know, what's happened in the week and before. And it's very difficult to capture those same things with video. You know, even going shooting a shooting a, a sunrise, you don't have the same control over the image that you do with a with a, um, you know when, when you take a picture with a video. So, so I, I I've always been kind of more of a documenter. Uh, when I first got my iPhone, it was just to take photos of things I saw on the street, and then I started getting more into aesthetic values. For whatever reason, um, with video, I'm going through that whole thing again. Where video, I'm just not really interested in capturing the same aesthetic beauty of something. I'm just capturing a moment. And for me, the the apps that are around are really fitting that. Like I can't quite get like a you know a riot that happens on Market Street or something. I can't quite. Maybe I'll luck out and get that one photo that tells the whole story. But yeah, uh, for the most part, I'm just I'm just acting like I used to like four years ago. I'm just like a guy who happens to be at a place and I'm gonna share what's going on or a funny thing that I see or whatever. Uh, so, so uh, you know, the video apps that are out there are working fine for me, except Mal, I think what you're saying is what, what, is the, what is it that we need to get out of a video app? Like, what do we like watching? You know, with Instagram, it's very easy. You just flip through yeah. and it's an image and you like it or whatever, but video, you've got this awkward thing where you have to stop and play it or, you know, it's, it's a totally different thing. To, to view it rather than the capturing part. Yeah, I mean, 15 seconds with, with Vidi, it's 15 seconds. They just upped it to 30 seconds. Yeah. I don't, that's, you know, that can be uh, eight pictures for me or if I'm sitting on a train flipping through it, you know, not, and every second of that counts. Every single second of those 15 seconds count. Otherwise, it's boop, because it's so, there's so much, you know, so much coming at you. I mean, I I I've been on those apps, and like after a few minutes, I'm like, I want those three minutes back. I didn't find anything compelling, <laughs> and yet in photography, there's always in that mix of time, I'm always going to find something compelling. I mean, I think in in my profession where it is taking off, I mean, not to, to, to completely disparage it, but for reporters and news reporters who are out there on a daily basis, you know, being able to go out there with your iPhone and we've got these little mics you can plug in that will make it a lavalier and to do it well and then to be able to produce it and send it back to the office 
for something that's good enough, um, you know, for the web for sure, and potentially for broadcasting is absolutely brilliant. Um, the BBC, in fact, has done some um, live uh, on the scene interview experiments with you just using the iPhone and have worked out great. So reporting as a tool in, in terms of shooting video is great, but kind of I haven't yet found, you know, a sweet spot for, you know, um, finding a lot of inspirational video where I'd like to sit and watch and consume it. Um, I think our production values uh, are so high in terms of kind of what we're used to seeing and story arcs and being really consumed and, 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 and being involved in, in video that I think it's very hard for, for people to kind of do that in 15 or 30 seconds. Oxy, what do you think? Um, I think? I think Vine is probably a good place to start the conversation because it has blended elements of photography and uh, video because of its um, brevity. It's only six seconds. Um, but what I think is really interesting is Vine is essentially a, a GIF, a potentially between a GIF file and a video file. And, you know, I made, I've been playing with it trying to see what aesthetics you get out of it. And with, without your exposure lock and your focus lock, you are at the mercy of evil uh, light, evil movement. Um, you can't control. You you can't control. And if you can't control, you can't tell a story. And for me, that's where they're going to really struggle. It, the content's going to be fairly simple, pretty boring, not dynamic. And until Vine really implements some better options for controlling and even some some sort of edits, not filters. I don't really want to see a grunge, you know, Vine. You know, I don't want my 16 millimeter vines coming out. But I do want that um, basic focus. And exposure lock, and if we get that, then you've got a really dynamic medium for what is essentially behind the scenes. And more and more people want to essentially voyeur other people, and it's a voyeuristic tool. It's not a, it's not the same storytelling tool because it doesn't have that control. So it's a voyeuristic tool. So content-wise, you've got to consider what's going to be a vine, what's going to be a video, what's going to be a photo. Um, so I think that's that's the decision right now. Content. What what's the content that's appropriate to the, the tool, uh, and then the, what's the best tool to use? You know, is it iPhone, is it Android, etc. So I mean, I, I I think that Vine itself needs to evolve um, before it becomes mainstream. I think for the moment it's got a really good fashion market because you can um, you can you know uh, get the movement um, and an element of movement in, in in a Vine which you wouldn't get in a photo, and I think that's really powerful. Um, I would just like to control the order. It's great, but <laughs> yeah, I think um, there's got to be some sort of an app released which is like Pro Vine, and essentially you you can then import into Vine because I see what Vine's done is it's locked it um, so that you can't import a video shot with another device. You you've got to shoot the Vine there and then, and accept it there and then, and that's it. You know, so we'll see. Could be interesting. We'll come back to the um, we'll come back to that point about importing and managing media. Um, we we'll move into the next section on storytelling and editing. Um, but I'd love to. Um, uh, I think you've made uh, some very, very, very critical points about um, about Vine and uh, some of those uh, earlier apps. Um, Christian, what's your thoughts on it? How are we going to see your work animated and brought to life? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, I kind of like the Dutch's point. Um, I do believe that it's it's pretty limited at the moment. I haven't experimented with a whole lot of video apps. Um, it's in the books, but. Uh, I know I've used Pro Camera. I believe that's what it's called, um, and I do like the uh, the exposure control um, and all of that. I think that's probably the, the biggest thing is having exposure control. That's what things like Vine I don't really have a use for because not really a whole lot of creative use for it, um, not at least yet. Not not anything like diverse or original. Um, but um, when it comes to video, I would need something that. Um, of course, could all be done on the phone because uh, I mean, at the moment, the things that I want to do, I would have to take it to like a third-party uh, just platform, whether it be the the computer or um, something like that, and just yeah, do all my editing there. And um, I do believe there's there's a lot of potential um, in all of this, um, but I don't think that um, there's any apps that are out yet that I've that I've looked at that really caught my attention. Um, so. Uh, Storytelling and all that—I do believe that it's it's possible to do something. It would, it would definitely be a little more personal, 
um, as far as just like um, like piecing together something that's um, like, like minutes long. And what you guys discussed earlier about um, like just grasping someone's attention and being able to hold it, um, it's definitely going to require a lot of uh, like touching and tuning um, in the end to really make it, I think, interesting. Unless you just want to go straight black and white and find something creepy and um, dark, I think that's a little easier. But um, yeah, I, uh, it's it's something that I have to to experiment a little bit more with, but uh, I think it's exciting. I definitely believe there's still a lot of potential out there. So, has anybody downloaded any um, video apps this week or anything video related? No. No problem. Well then, uh, <laughs> let's finish up this. Sorry, Ollie. Go ahead. No, that's know? that's okay. No, I was just going to say no. Vine's Vine's hard enough. <laughs> It is hard enough. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so let's um, uh, let's start with you then. Uh, Vine basically added a new feature this week. It allows you to um, unfollow the editor's picks, hit or miss. <laughs> if you even care. Can I start with this one? Because when I first joined Vine, the editor's pick was something to do with objects that shouldn't be mentioned in a public broadcast, and and all sorts of ideas with using these objects. And I I couldn't believe it. I essentially just thought that this was a massive mistake. And I mean, they sh they're, they're lucky the app's still around, to be honest. Um, they are, yeah. So I don't know who's, who's been um, flogged uh, in, the main, <laughs> in the main square uh, for, yeah, for Vine violations, but it's bad. It was terrible. So um, yeah, uh, has, has anyone actually got anyone worth following on Vine? That would be an interesting uh, take instead of the editors. That's, that's what I'm interested in finding. Um, uh, you know, I tried to make one yesterday, and again, I just wish I could have done it in a different order. And plus, the you know, finding a rhythm to Vine when you're shooting so that your third picture or your fourth picture isn't just like you have like a ding, 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 ding. Uh, you know, it's yeah, like you can't yeah. get that rhythm. And unless you can edit that, you want that rhythm. And then a single shot on Vine is like, well, you know, why? Mm -hmm. um, cool. Okay, so let me move to the next one. Um, YouTube. YouTube latest update includes the ability to be able to control YouTube from your iPhone or from, a, um, from, from any of the boxes that are out there. So if you have a, an Xbox or if you have a PS3, you can connect your iPhone to those devices, link them, and then with your iPhone basically control your, your channel play. Yeah. Uh, hit or miss? What do you think, Dutch? You know, I, I haven't even tried it. I'll be interested to see what that's like. So, so we, we watch most of our Xbox uh, or YouTube videos okay, on Xbox yeah. and trying to, trying to use the Xbox controller is a real hassle because yeah. you don't have a you know, uh, letter thing. I, I've been using YouTube's online version, if I guess, which just came out where you, you like, um, connect temporarily through a website and you can control what goes on YouTube. But that was a pain in the ass. I, I haven't seen this update, though, uh, but that sounds perfect for me because that sounds like I don't have to go online every single time uh, no, you, just to connect my device. Yep, connect your phone. Um, and if you download the latest uh, version, they've uh, a good online tutorial specific for whatever, um, um, whatever TV device you have. So whether you're using a, uh, an over-the-top box like um, your PlayStation 3 or your Xbox or Wii U. Um, anybody here using Cinemagram? You. Here's what's cool that they added that isn't on another app. Um, the ability to be able to um, add in a hyperlink. So you can hyperlink from a particular clip directly to a third party. So there's a potential then for actually seeing the entire sort of like beginning to end of a, of a purchase cycle. So if you put a, uh, if a brand was to use a, a certain clip, uh, they can add the hyperlink that goes directly to the page and then obviously then look at the tracking of that. Um, something very interesting, something that I will say that I'd hoped Instagram would have added years ago, um, but it's, um, uh, that's pretty good. Um, Vidi obviously added 30 seconds. Hit, miss, doesn't matter. Any thoughts? Harder. <laughs> yeah, I, right? I saw it to 30 seconds. I was like, really? <laughs> 30 seconds now? So, I mean, it's more seconds to want back after you watch bad <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, like anybody, up, anybody on Tout other than the Wall Street Journal? 
have you used tout at all, coaching? Mm. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, see, the, uh, the, the video space is a lot harder, right? It, um, it, okay. Yeah. So um, uh, let's jump into the, uh, the last topic. And let me also say that we're doing awesome on time. We're now at uh, uh -huh. 8.41. So within our uh, within our within our window, so I do appreciate um, everybody um, working towards that uh, goal of not uh, spending too much time. So now we're into the final segment, which is storytelling and editing. Um, I suppose what I'd love to do, Oxy, uh, is you brought up a point about being able to import content in from um, third part, well, in from your camera roll, basically, right, into Vine or any other third parties. So, so let's talk about content management for a second, then. What's your thoughts on that? Um, OK, one example I've seen is somebody has set up a video exactly how they want it on a screen, and then they've taken a vine of the screen. And you can tell because of the banding and yeah. that sort of shooting a digital display with a digital sensor display, yeah, yeah. effect. But that's, that's, the, that's the one way I've seen it's of getting around the limitations of getting content in. Uh, another way would be, um, uh, I mean, similarly, um, having a massive, you know, there was the movie which was shot in one big take. I can't remember the, the film, but having that level of production, just like everyone ready to go, you know, your cues, you'd have your everything everything set up. I mean, I think Cozy might be a better person to, to ask or Dutch about this sort of level of um, sophistication in production value. but. Um, yeah, look, it's just, it's what do you fill in that space? You know, I tried walking around with a vine and taking uh, 10 shots. So instead of taking 10 photos, I'd take 10 little bits of vine. And then when I watched it, I thought I was going to have a, a, an epileptic fit, <laughs> just trying to consume all the information. Um, so it it's kind of like that speed of cutting is, is actually detrimental to any type of content which is cut-based, um, unless you've got some sort of a joke. So... But look, it's um, a lot of kids are going to start playing with it. A lot of people are going to get into this space through it, and it's going to teach them a lot about both photography, but I think more about filmmaking, um, because I just don't think the vine is photography. You know, I go back to what I said earlier about, you know, if you're going to set up a, a something where you have one long take and you have people moving and dancing and people coming in and out of it, is at that point, getting a bigger camera or getting a camera that's going to capture that just a little bit better is worth every penny. And you're not doing a, you're, you're doing a disservice to the people who are working for you at that point when it's that large. Really? Oh, no, 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 no. Yes. When you, listen, when you have hundreds of people on set, and then you have a, seriously, you have hundreds of people on set, and you've blocked everything out, and it's lit by people, and then you show up with an iPhone to shoot it? <laughs> that's a good are you kidding? <laughs> I, are you kidding? I can't imagine the hell I would take. You, you would have to be Quentin Tarantino or Steven Spielberg to pull that one off. Just be like, all right, guys, let's go. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, one of the things I, I'd like to discuss, especially with um, the camera, is, is the lenses. I feel like if we added, like, an alo clip or one of those Schneider lenses to the Vine or something like that, you might get something new and a little more interesting out of it. I'm just throwing that. I haven't tried it yet, but I, I should. No, no, I, I agree. But I'm, I'm going to go back to, um, and, and I'll tell you, we definitely want to have a uh, a longer discussion around, um, you know, how we're going to create better images, whether that be uh, whether that be mobile photography or mobile videography or filmmaking, um, and looking at different lenses and different options to be able to uh, manipulate the image. Um, but I want to I want to go back to storytelling, and um, I want to go back to like almost like the media management. There are apps out there um, within the photography space. So you've got the pro camera apps where we have light boxes. And the light boxes are kind of like the intermediate position where you know your images are stored there, and then you get the option to be able to store them to your camera roll. Um, and, and then you've got these apps like Pitch, and you've got other um, um, editing apps that basically go to your camera roll, and they be able, they're able to suck in that content and, and, and tell a story, right? So I suppose what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, um, do we really think that um, it's important that these new video apps, right, um, allow us to edit the content? You know, like, I can't edit with Light, I can't edit with Vine, I can't really edit with, um, uh, with a lot of others, but what Vidi has done and what Cinemagram has done is pretty much 
gone out and said, look, if you want to use your pro camera app, right, Filmic Pro if you're shooting or pro camera, um, edit your piece and then suck it into the app itself, you know, so create it, media manage it, store it into your camera roll, and then we'll take it in and do our, our final, like, final five minute little tweak to it. Um, Kochi, any thoughts on that? You know, you're in the media space. You've got students that are out there trying to manage content and create compelling stories. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I have. That sounds like a really good, good workflow in some sense. Um, if you want to use whatever feature, be it the sharing feature, right? So you you cut your yep, fi yep. little film elsewhere or whatever, you can bring it through your camera roll. Um, but I don't know. It seems to defeat the purpose. So why not? Can't somebody just create an all all encompassing, um, you know, video creation and video editing app? You know, that just kind of allows me to shoot with the controls I need, save it to my camera roll, and sh you know, then edit it and share it. Um, I don't know. I don't. There may be developer, you know, issues around um, some of this stuff that we don't know. I'm certainly not a developer, <laughs> and I don't know the limitations of you know what they may or may not be able to do in terms of the you know the APIs or what have you for for the phone. Um, but you know, it's certainly it's certainly a limiting thing when you can't get into one of these apps and you know, kind of uh, put your own touch on it. Um, but at the same time, I, I do have to say, it's kind of a charming time because I think some of these limitations push people to make creative workarounds like what Ollie was talking about. Yeah. And sometimes I think that's absolutely a brilliant thing for our minds to, 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 to find a problem and, you know, and to find a way to fix it. I remember when I first got my phone, I wanted my pictures to look more on Instagram, more like, real photographs, and then I got the brilliant idea to print them out on my inkjet printer and re-photograph them with my phone. So I shot them with my phone, I printed them out in my printer, and I re-shot them with my phone, and it was that one one extra step away. But anyway, I you know, so some of these limitations, I think, technology goes through a phase where things aren't perfect, and people bitch and complain like we are, and then we find creative ways, and then I think the next wave of video apps may may have what we're what we're looking and longing for. Doc, have you, uh, have you spent any time um, using, we say, iMovie or, or any of the other sort of like storytelling apps, you know, like Quixie? Basically, the apps that kind of like aggregate your content after you've shot it and uh, help you sort of like uh, post-produce it into a, um, uh, into a story. Yeah, I, I just used uh, iMovie yesterday uh, and in the process of uh, posting to YouTube and kind of wondering why other people couldn't see it, I realized that all my iMovie photos were for some reason going up private and I had like months of <laughs> videos. I'm like, why isn't anybody watching these? And for whatever reason, they all default to private when they go up and you have to go to a website and change that, which seems weird because what's the point of having mobile uploading? if you can't do it mobily. But uh, I, I really actually like the experience for a very simple video. I was doing a yeah. little, little how-to on how to mod and use one of these little toy cameras that I have, and it was perfect for that. Like, I, I liked how the audio came out. Um, I, I think it's, it's kind of interesting we're talking about all-in-one tools because uh, it kind of makes me think about Hipstamatic and how Hipstamatic's really good for shooting photos, but then the deeper you go into their advanced features, like trying to order a print or... Uh, I think they have some sort of social thing, which is crazy hard to use. Um, even buying f uh, new lenses and f uh, films seems to take a lot of work. Uh, it's really good for taking that photo, and it's really good for that. Then I use Snapseed, which is really good for editing. And I guess that's kind of what I do now. I just shoot in camera mode uh, or with the regular camera app and then just go to iMovie and just do that. And having an all-in-one thing seems nice, but it seems like you're going to be really good at making an app for taking video and then someone else is going to be really good at making an app for editing the video and someone else is going to be really good at making an app for sharing that video. But all in one would be tough. I mean, I'd love, I'd love it was, if, it was, uh, if it was possible, you know. I mean, I'm using Filmic Pro and I'll shoot in slow-mo and I'll shoot in fast motion and it's good. I can save all my settings and stuff and... Um, you know, for a developer to go out there and um, recreate all that um, and put it into an app um, which has video editing as well would be, in my mind, superb. You know, I'd love just one single app because 
I think you know when when you look at the the workflow and the production process, you know part of the problem that you have in um, you know, I mean, I might have my production process, but by the time I would have to, I mean, you, you need a course to be able to teach your production process, you know, um, in order to, uh, I suppose, monetize it or scale it, especially if you're a business or you're a brand um, or anybody that has to sort of like uh, produce content in real time. Um, Kochi, uh, quick question then for you in terms of, um, you know, I suppose the workflow. Um, your personal workflow when you're producing your own videos or your own uh, photography, um, mm -hmm. how often do you break and rebuild your process? Is that something that takes, you know, you, you stay the same for like 30 days or 90 days and then you decide, okay, you know what, let me, let me change the way I'm, uh, I'm shooting or the way I'm editing or the way in which I'm packaging my stories. No, I'm, uh, I'm unfortunately fairly consistent in the photography uh, end of things. And I'm pretty comfortable kind of just doing doing what I do, how I do it, and, and finding that comfort zone. I mean, I haven't quite found it in, in, in video and in terms of shooting videos and producing videos and trying to create journalism. I find that I'm using the phone to shoot, and then I'm just exporting the file onto my iPad, which one is a bigger and much easier way to edit, especially if you want to edit uh, you know, in a, in a kind of sophisticated way. There's a couple of really good video editing apps outside of iMovie. One's called First Video, and actually it was, yeah. it actually came before iMovie. They, they had it on the market before Apple released iMovie. Um, and there's another one by um, Avid um, that's actually not bad that allows a lot of sophisticated control. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn that workflow and that habit for video, but I'm finding that going from my phone to an iPad is actually working for, for cutting um, images. And I use a thing called Photo Transfer, which is Bluetooth's images and videos back and forth from my um, iPhone to my iPad. So that's one I'm still working on. Um, but the photo one, I'm pretty, I'm still pretty set in my ways, and it takes a, it, it'll take a hell of a black and white um, app to come along to get me to to get me out of my uh, <laughs> my, Nike, my Nike black and white hipstamatic film which by the way I keep telling people that hipstamatic has made available and then there's some glitch they had recently where they released a pack and it was supposed to be in there but apparently Apple released it too soon and then they pulled it from the shelves so everybody's kind of pissed but anyway <laughs> interesting uh, you know, Kochi, Kochi after your uh, Mac world talk I went to Hipstamatic and I was telling them that you were talking about the Nike thing. And they're like, oh, really? I think maybe we should like talk to Nike and see if we can get that re-released. So then it gets re-released this week and I, it made me laugh. I was like, well, they, did, they, 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 they said they were going to do it and then they pulled it. Now they don't know if they're going to throw it back on. And it, I, think, I think it's. A, I think there's a thing between, a, a deal between them and Nike. I don't think it's ever, it's as simple as we can just throw it up. Yeah, yeah. Christian, do you think you'll, after this conversation, do you think you'll jump into the video space anytime soon? Uh, probably. Um, I've good. been thinking a lot about it, I mean, even good, before good, this, good. but um, probably a catalyst to get things moving. Um, Christian, yeah. I have a yeah. question for you. If you're, how do you see your, your style of work, which is very different than, you know, a lot of us here, and actually very different than what, because uh, of your complete sort of photographic vision, how do you see that working with video for you? Do you see yourself being frustrated by that? Um, yes, first off. <laughs> but um, there will probably be a lot of um, either like this heavy production value or like post-production work. Um, that's what I would imagine. Again, I haven't experimented with enough to be able to say at the moment. But... Um, with the limitations and the things that I would like to do, it would be easier with um, uh, a larger camera. I'm not really a huge fan of DSLRs, but um, I don't know. I think it's uh, something I have to toy around with. Because um, I, I have been able to, I know on Photoshop, you can do like frame by frame um, editing. So um, as opposed to like going and, um, like going and animating and kind of doing a green screen and all that, I could go to Photoshop and frame by frame, basically the same amount of time I would spend editing like a single one of uh, my photos, but do that like per frame in the video. So I, I could dedicate a, 
a couple of months to like just working on a single video and, and like painting the landscape or going in and kind of like compositing it, but I'd probably kill myself by the end of it, so I I don't think I'll do that, but uh, yeah, but I'm, the, I'm open to improvements. What was that? I think the Academy uh, looks fondly on uh, well-produced iPhone stories. You know, that's, that's <laughs> true. That's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I I wouldn't say that there's uh, really any limitation on it. I mean, ten years ago, no one really saw this coming. So I mean, can't really say what's next. I'm. Uh, I'm just always looking for the next big thing. I'm always expanding, trying to improve. I just I always have my hands in like different mediums all the time, and uh, slowly losing my sanity along the way. So it's, it's what what is the for your pictures? Um, what's the app you use mostly? What's it called? Uh, Art Studio. Art Studio. Yeah, I'm a pretty minimalist when it comes to apps, so I can't really contribute a whole lot to these conversations. Um, I did the most recent thing that I tested. Um, I know the Photoshop. Um, the Adobe guys just released a, a new Photoshop Touch app. I did the beta testing for that. Um, and it's not very different from um, uh, Art Studio, what I already use. In fact, there's a lot of stuff that, that's lacking, I feel, especially when it comes to painting, uh, just using your fingers and all that. And uh, So I'm kind of toying around with it a little bit more, trying to figure out um, all the benefits of it. but. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Art Studio is definitely the, the number one app for compositing, painting, and just being able to, I don't know, just be stable. Because uh, I know there's, a, was it Filterstorm? That was that was one I used before, but it was not stable. It would shut down on me in like, um, like a couple hours into it when I hadn't like saved for like the last half hour. And yeah, I was just kind of <laughs> threw my phone across the room. That was good times. So Art Studio is, Art Studio is nice. Which the phone throwing across the room thing, I will say that the, the iPhones are pretty sturdy. It's a, a, <laughs> lot, of, a lot of hits, so I'm not trying but, to pitch the sale here, but yeah. uh, You have a case pitch. there though, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like a little like, uh, like, fake, okay, pla so, like fake plastic, that's even possible. <laughs> really lame, but uh, yeah. I'm just trying to keep my eye on the clock here. I can talk for a long time, so I'm just trying to <laughs> not go overboard here. Don't worry, I'll, I'll cut you off. But um, no, brilliant. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is that uh, I think you do contribute. I know we're, we're talking really, um, you know, about apps, but it's not really about apps. It's really about the storytelling process, and it's really about, you know, the three categories. I, I see it as three categories, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'd love to, I'd love to continue these, um, uh, these talks, um, and uh, I'd love to do it with a lot of the individuals that are on this call tonight. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think it's been a lot of fun, and um, I've learned a lot. Um, and I think the dialogue is healthy. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else want to contribute and, and, and give their last, uh, their last words? Actually, let me start off over here. Hogsy, we'll start with you. Um, I just think that um, we can talk all about apps, and we can talk about the new ways and new processes, but I think that so much of our work has to do with the community of people who we interact with, and I think that there should be more time spent looking at how that's shifting, how that's changing. I, I think Instagram is predominantly a social platform now, not a photography platform, um, but I still think it has the potential for quality photography. So. Um, I think it's, it's very interesting to see the effect on the overall population uh, from images being so important in the day-to-day -day and social lives of people. I think that's going to be really fascinating to look into. Thank you for that. Kochi. Oh, rock on, shoot on, break it, bend it, do whatever, get, get, get what you need out of it. <laughs> that's why I love the tool, man. <laughs> Dutch. Um, I would say it would be interesting to talk about the basics of photography from some uh, people that really understand framing um, and um, what to leave out, cropping, that kind of thing would be really interesting. I think that is um, widely, widely um, ignored and um, a lot of people post stuff um, that could be a great picture if it was just cropped a little bit better. Um, but just understanding the basics of photography, the rule of thirds, that kind of stuff. Um, I think that would just be a plain interesting conversation because you, 
you can't get a, even a well apt picture without a good shot to begin with. Um, and I've seen them, and I know we've all seen them. And also some some own personal self editing. I'm sure I'm as guilty of it as others um, <laughs> of not of of only posting really the best of your best. And if that's ten pictures a year, um, then it's ten pictures a year. I mean. I think the I think the person who I, you know, I mean not because he's here but Mal his own personal self editing is rather is and you don't post that many pictures on Instagram uh, yet you have a huge following and I've gone out shooting with you and you take a lot of pictures and you know rarely does one show up you know and I think that would be an interesting thing is what what to post you know what makes you post something. Rather right, than look. rather than the feedback of rather than just people liking you, I I, I think that's a great um uh, I think that's a great uh, a great topic and I'd love to um you know maybe we would just pull a few of our own images together and maybe in a, in the next chat we'll just um share um and critique our work because I think Oxy you've um you brought up a brilliant point you know like you can have these communities but like 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 yeah but. To be able to, I mean, at the very start, I had one or two individuals who absolutely ripped my work apart, and they were brilliant, and they were right, and it was like, Mal, you need to get your act together and sort this out. And uh, I, I appreciate happened? the people who uh, actually tell the truth. There's a lot of uh, yeah. That's a whole can of worms that I could spend talking about. I could I could spend a whole other episode on that thing. So there are people I send my pictures to, and I'll, I'll I'll look for feedback from them before I'll send it, because a lot of times it's the same people liking your picture, and in the long run, it doesn't mean anything, you know. Yeah, but don't forget, you guys, the greatest photographer that ever lived, in my opinion, and in history's opinion, I think too. Somebody posted some Henry Cartier Bresson pictures on Flickr, and everybody ripped them like a new one. And wow. this guy, yeah, it, it's the funny. You should you should Google it if you hadn't see, haven't seen it. And then at the end, the guy comes on and goes, "Okay, come on, you know, the, the, he's the, one of the greatest photographers that ever lived." It was it's pretty hysterical. It's a great a little social experiment in uh, commenting on photographs. We should definitely include that as part of our uh, our next our next chat. Doc, you actually have the last word. <laughs> My last words. Well, no, I think this is a, a fun, a fun chat. I, it would be uh, interesting to find a way to be able to split it up into talking about um, taking photos and talking about technology that that drives some of the way we process those things. Because you could do a show on either one of those things, and trying to trying to do them together would be fun, but it might be might be a little difficult sometimes. Because I, I can very easily geek out on. The new apps out there, or hopefully equally geek out on technique or things I saw that I liked other people doing. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we should split the shows um, around uh, you know the technology and around the storytelling, or, or 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 maybe what we do is we split them, but it's an eighty twenty, you know, but it's still a combination of both, you know, because mm -hmm. I think I think there is there is an important um, element that needs to be. Yeah. Well, like, like Dutch, like, like Dutch was saying, it doesn't matter if it's uh, if it's uh, heavily processed or not. If it's not a good photo to start with, yes. Yeah. Gentlemen, you've all been fantastic. I really appreciate all your time. And um, this is the end of the uh, show for tonight. Thank you, Adorama. Thank you yeah, so thank much. You. Yeah, thank you. Adorama rocks, wow. right? Great talk. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you again. Looking forward to it. Bye bye. Bye.